Good afternoon my friends. Uh, let's start off with a thank you to Gordon for the previous session. Um, that session on pixel mapping in Titan can be found in the video section of the Avalites Facebook page and I think if you click on any of the posts that people have put earlier it will replay the session for you as well. Okay so it's time for some AI knowledge. Um, this session we are going to be looking at edge blending techniques in AI. So I was going to kind of put this in last week's session on using the projector page but I realised there was so much more that I could just throw in and actually do a whole session on it. So that's what we're going to do today. So there's going to be three sort of main areas we look at today, three different techniques. Um, one is the, the easiest approach which is just using um, on output edge blending. The second one, uh, we're going to try and show you how the auto blend feature works. That's us using the Viozo engine to do camera based warp and blend. I'm going to do a small setup of that. I've got a camera set up here and hopefully we're going to be able to see that. And then last but not least today, I'm going to show a more advanced technique using the modules, but it gives a truly unique form of edge blending which is really so very useful when you're doing complex 3D mapped projects. Okay so without further ado let's get ourselves set up, let's build a project, let's get our screen in there. I've got a template that I've made so we'll bring that in and I'll just explain what's going on with that as well. So first of all let's just start with a new project. So that's the AI icon, the file icon and the project browser. I'm going to click on blank project at the top. I'm going to delete the name and I'm going to call this Edge Blending and press enter. So that's just going to take a moment whilst it's um, building that project. Now I'm going to hold off changing the size and the resolution of this until I've brought my template in. So what I've done is I've actually calculated in advance what I think I, I need to see on there. So let's go up here so on my banks here I've actually got my template here that I've made I'm going to just look at this so what I've done um, let's explain about what edge blending actually is first of all because there might be some people out there who don't don't have the experience and don't fully know so whenever you shine um, a light at a surface obviously that illuminates that surface and in this case our projector is our light when you shine two lights or two projectors at a point in a surface the brightness builds up it doesn't just get to a value and stop getting brighter it gets brighter and brighter and so when we have three projectors if we have uh, the section A, section B and section C you can see that overlapping where uh, in between the projectors so these we would describe as hot spots in our projection so probably these overlapping areas are going to be twice as bright as the areas which just have one projector hitting them and this can be really obvious when you're running big screens and so what we really want to do is just get it so it's a constant brightness across the whole of the setup so what we traditionally do you can see these darkened areas where there's an overlap so if I just look at section A for the moment. Um, section A I'd basically add a gradient or a fall off so the side nearest the letter A is going to be as bright as the rest of the image and then getting further away to this far edge it's going to get darker and then on the, the B section we'd have the reverse so from the middle going outwards it would be getting darker and from the middle here going outwards and then on the C section we just have on that one there. So without further ado what we're going to do let's get this onto our screen now you'll notice that although each of these are high definition areas they're 1920 by 1080 pixels we actually lose a little bit of length um, because of the overlapped area and that's something that a lot of people can forget to calculate um, when we calculate a blending area you usually sort of think either of a certain amount of pixels that you want to blend or a percentage of the total size. Now on this I've just done a percentage. So my first screen is 1920 pixels wide. My second screen is 1920 pixels wide but I've lost in this case 10% of the width, 192 pixels. 
um, and the same on my third screen here I've lost 10% of that so that's actually going to give us a rather than 5760 as our horizontal width which is 3 times 1920 it's going to give us 5376 uh, that is minus 384 which is 2 times 192 anyway this, that's sounding a bit too much like a maths lesson let's get, get away from the numbers so 5376 by 1080 so I could try and work out a special ratio so that my upwards is always one and then my width is the correct amount but a little trick you can do here we can just basically add those numbers 5376 uh, by 1080 into our width and height so what I'm going to do just so that I don't get a huge model I'm going to go 5.376 which means down here I'm going to go 1.8 uh, no, I'm not 1.080. There we go. So that's going to actually be the right size for my template. Let's just throw it on there just to make sure it doesn't look strange. Is there? Just so that I know that that is fully 1920. My edge blending area is 192. I've got my full resolution. And if I needed it as a reference, I actually measured what my my area inside the blends was as well. Um, and that goes all the way down so I've got them marked on there it's not necessary but it's just quite useful and also what I've done on this template I've drawn a line from the ex the opposite corners of the full area which just sometimes helps you to understand if there's any distortion going on with your image at all okay so let's get some projectors into this project so I'm going to add one projector first of all uh, let's just bring it out on our Z a little bit so we can see what's happening so we want to give it a correct aspect ratio so I'm going to do 16 divided by 9 and a nice lens ratio let's go for a lens ratio of about 2 yeah that was not a bad guess there that genuinely was a guess as well uh, you can see I've got a little bit of extra over my edge blending areas which is probably alright actually um, okay let's just add two more projectors in and then if you remember from the other day I can select the first projector control C to copy its parameters select the second control V select the third control V so now they're all in that same position with the same lens ratio and uh, distance all that kind of thing so I'm just going to move one of my projectors over a little bit maybe something like that I'm going to go a little bit more I'm using the shift keys and the shift and control keys to move on smaller divisions so that's 1.72 so I'm going to just that's minus 1.72 so I'm going to put this one to 172 and let's just give them names as well let's say right middle and left okay great um, I'm going to just drag select all of those just so that I can see the beams on all of them just make sure I'm happy yeah that's looking really good to me okay let's just put that there because I'm a fussy man okay so this looks great to me um, I'm just going to go back to my performance page give that a double click just to make sure it's saved okay so let us start to have a look at our output page so we're not using the screen output on this one in fact I'm going to go in there and just delete that piece of screen there we go we're actually using the projector so we need to enable each of the projectors so I'm going to go on, on my left projector is going to go on output 2 my middle projector is going to go on output 3 and my right projector is going to go on output 4 that's looking kind of good here now I'm not going to concern myself with adjusting the mapping too much here because it's basically the same technique as we saw on Friday's session we've got vertices I'm going to zoom in on the model on the left just to give us a view moving with my alt button there we go uh, we've got the vertices or the vertex points of the model can be adjusted um, it's on a per projector basis as well so just to confirm here if for instance I decided that the end of this needed to be a little squeezed in um, my scale Y like so 
so you see the kind of thing I can grab those points individually if I wanted to as well I can move them around so and so anyway rid of our edge blending will get rid of that section as well so at the top here we've got this edge blending panel uh, the button for the edge blending panel give that one a press so the edge blending itself is quite nice and self-explanatory um, we want to put our blend here on the right so we can see these coloured handles around the edge um, the middle handles will move the whole of the edge uh, evenly whereas if we grab a corner we can just move just that corner so it's great for angles and stuff um, the green is the inner section and that once we move the green we'll see a red marker as well so let's just bring that one in I'm going to bring it on too much at first just so that we can clearly see what the effect is so we can see this point up until this green line my image color is unchanged and then from here in the gradient is applied we can see it's a linear gradient at the moment if I want to change how much or how little that fall off occurs I can either dip it or bring it out like so um, you'll notice here on the right as well we've got manual controls for all of these so some people prefer the control of a fader and you've got reset controls there as well and as I said, the red will actually just cut the image off hard if we want it to. Um, you can even, I think if you push the push the value to an extreme, you can just use it literally as a crop if you want. Um, anyway, so I want to go th about there. And then I want my other edge to be about there. Now I've just played with my edge blending settings, so I'm just going to reset them. So I've just gone for a straight linear curve there, uh, a linear fall off. So it just fades from light to dark. So ideally what we do is on section B where we also have this overlap section, we're going to have a matched curve. And the idea of that is that if we take, this is our zero value and this is our one value, and the other one is doing exactly the opposite, then theoretically those values should never equal more than one one being our constant brightness across the image um, so I mentioned that we had corner handles there as well let's just have a quick play with those just to see what they do so we can sort of use those to create wedges and stuff like that as well if we need to so if you're working with strange shapes they're really quite useful for now I'm going to just pull these little ones out of the way again I've got those manual tools there there we go so I could just use that reset button next to the, the number box you can type in these number boxes as well if you want actually um, so just to confirm that I could type in a value if I knew precisely where I wanted that edge blend to be that's a really nice useful tool as well you'll find some um, quite high-end projectionists do know down to a pixel value where they want their blending to occur and how much their image they're willing to sacrifice okay so we've got um, our left projector set up so our middle projector we've gone to output 3 to our edge blending there so I bring my green edge in I'm going to just push that up so I can see where my edge is there we go let's maybe just reset that blending so it's that nice flat linear curve linear fall off um, and that one there let's bring that one there, there we go reset my curve approach to um, simple edge blending uh, now obviously with this technique this relies on your projectors either as I've done it here without any geometric adjustment this would rely on your projectors being nicely aligned which in the ideal world they're going to be nicely aligned anyway um, with the best will in the world the alignment on a projector is always going to be better than from a computer because in a projector you're using a lens which is has a lot more analog control on it even if it's digitally controlled it's generally an analog piece um, and you just get a very fine amount of tuning compared to the pixelation that you see in a rasterized image okay so this is our first technique
this one's really nice and easy now what we're going to do we are now going to have a quick look at using auto blend so I'm going to just go through and jump off of that back onto the mapping editor for each of those okay so the difference with auto blend so with, with this kind of mapping editor we've still got control over the output here AI has control over the output with auto blend what it's going to do is going to create a file which it puts on the end of our video chain at our outputs and anything we do in AI is then going to be applied to that output map now normally auto blend is done with projectors and a camera now obviously I'm running from home today so things are a little bit different so what I've actually done um, I do have a webcam that I'm using but I'm just using um, a monitor instead of a projector now the result is exactly the same um, it was, I just didn't have a projector to hand it does also mean that we're just going to do this with one screen but the technique I show is going to be exactly the same for however many screens you do and with auto blend you can even run auto blend over a group of networked AI machines so it doesn't have to be limited to the amount of outputs on a single machine it could be 10 machines each running four outputs to give you a 40 output blend it works exactly the same okay so let us dive in then so on each of the projectors that I want to use with auto blend I'm going to select this auto blend icon at the top making sure the correct output is selected so on to number three for the middle one we select auto blend on to the right with number four we select auto blend the reason it's gone blank for now on the output is that I have no previous auto blend configurations in my system if I did have a previous configuration in the system um, we would see the previous mapping the warping and blending there on the screen okay so I like to just out of habit go back to the first projector I don't think it actually matters but it's good to have good habits now on the left hand side when we're on the auto blend window we see this little configure window um, I am going to look at it at the end of the process all we need to know for now is that we have this configure button on the top of the screen so let's give that one a press in fact yeah let's give that one a press first so this is going to open my Viozo application now I'm very sorry I cannot make it any bigger than this I was trying when I was practicing earlier and I just can't do it um, so we're going to have our Viozo application there now what I'm also going to do on this one we are going to have a view here there we go so now what we're seeing on the right hand section so this is my main in the Viozo element of AI we are going to choose to calibrate so we press the calibrate button now we see here that it says single client calibration what this is telling me is that there is only one media server in my network at the moment one media server being one client if I did have more servers in my network we would get multi client calibration here as an option too um, so we're going to select single client calibration now I'm going to work I'm going to choose which outputs I'm working with um, I am going to do my warping and blending on just output 2 um, if I was doing a, a widescreen like the one we just looked at with the three projectors I would select all of my outputs but for this because of the way I've had to set this demo up we're just going to do the one output um, it's worth bearing in mind with this as well it has to have a camera and it has to be able to see what it's doing in order to go through the process so even if you're just doing a test at home you do need a webcam in the loop for it to actually function otherwise you'll get an error so in the middle of the screen here we've got some um, some scanning types so one for big flat screens one that's really good for domes um, so we've seen like planetariums done really really quickly in like less than 10 minutes um, with one of these um, if you've ever done a planetarium manually you will know that it is a real pain in the bum to do so having a quick and easy solution is great any surface allows for some amount of geometric variation in z-depth but obviously with too much z-depth difference you can run into projector focus issues 
uh, manual setup lets you go in and completely tweak everything manually it's really really good far too much for me to provide information on in a single webinar um, and also you can load your previous calibration the preceding calibration in our camera section you should see anything that will show as an input on your server on your system or laptop or whatever you're running it on so this this auto blend is available in the Bondi and Miami versions of the AI dongles as well um, so this will show your video input cards you can see it showing me an NDI feed here or in my case I'm using my webcam anything that's a video input on your system should show now I'm using my webcam so from here it's pretty much a case of next 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 but the first time it feels a little bit intimidating uh, so let's run through that so we're gonna go next so here we're choosing the layout of our projectors now unless you are 100% sure that they are perfectly horizontally or vertically aligned I would always recommend to choose grid arbitrary we're gonna go next so the camera is just deciding if it can see the output at all so here now you can see a monitor in my room with a bookshelf and a load of tat in the background there's a little bit of my Mackie mixer covered in stuff there um, so we can see this black and white pattern now ideally we want to get strong blacks and strong whites in our image because that's what it's going to use to calculate the edge blending um, and the warping um, so I believe if we go into our options tab here there we go it will give me some settings relative to my particular webcam um, I'm going to take my exposure down a little bit maybe yeah that's looking nice actually I'm quite happy with that I'm just going to apply that I don't want to lose too much of the color maybe there it's a little bit glowy but I think this is what we're going to have to deal with because my webcam is sat so close to a and I can use this drawing tool here and I can literally mask off a section in fact I've done a really bad job there I'm going to just double click to complete that and I'm going to use my X to just draw the wrong thing splendid um, I'm going to just go back there one step next next so I should have been able to delete that but I had a sudden panic moment of oh no it's all going to go wrong so I just thought I'd start again very quickly there there we go so I double click to end my drawing of my line there I'm going to select my paint tool there we go and basically what I'm I'm dropping the paint tool in the areas that I want it to ignore um, I think I'm gonna just have a little bit more of a look at the exposure on my camera there yeah okay seemed a little bit shiny in the middle to me okay so that is great so basically we told it the area that I would want to for the blending and warping to occur if this was a multi output screen we'd be seeing the whole of the area here you need to capture it all in your camera and I could mask off the whole area as one big mask so before I press this next bit I'm gonna give us we've got our side by side here so this area on the right here we're going to see some stuff starting to happen now so if I press next and the camera is going to start doing its scans so first of all it's going to do a brightness test so I'm quite happy with that next and then we're going to do perform new scan so what this is going to do you saw on the output there it, it tried different sized dots um, so it's just getting its coverage now now ideally we want these circles to be as green as possible and where we have the areas here we actually want there to be circles so I'm going to take the size down a little bit let's take our margin up maybe I think this is going to get redder okay yeah so red is bad let's go up to there okay let's go with that I th yeah I think that's just about workable it's something you get used to the colours after a little while. These these kind of darker greens here are just on that edge of maybe it will work, maybe it won't work, but we're just going to go with it and see what happens. Um, 
Okay, so now that I'm happy with the coverage area, we're going to press next. And so what it's going to do now, it's going to use these lines and it's looking for, it's doing trigonometry. All that stuff they said was never going to be any use to us outside of school. It's looking at the difference in size along the whole of the line at all points. From that difference, it can work out using trigonometry the 3D position in space in relation to the camera. Um, and it uses that to work out any warping that needs to be done and it's also going to work out sort of overlap areas so if we did have multiple cameras it will be working out edge blending for us as well okay so this is just confirming that the area I uh, drew in is going to be displayed roughly like that and then we'll get a chance to actually step in and adjust that in a moment and as we see the adjustments happen you'll see them happening over here on my output um, okay so let's press next okay so this is the point where if I decide I can actually manually adjust things um, the main mode that we've got here is translation you can see my mouse pointer at the moment is showing uh, traditional trans this is interesting I'm going to continue talking but I think Facebook just crashed um, so oh I think it's still letting me be there we're going to just keep talking as though nothing ever happened then okay brilliant <laughs> um, so yeah if I need to on this page as I said it's like the other page we'd see the whole of our screen if we had a multi width multi output screen and the nice thing about Viozo is once we've calibrated and connected our screens we can move these corner points like so um, and we would see um, all of our outputs adjusting at the same time. Um, I'm just going to click on there. I am not 100% certain that I'm streaming. We're just going to hope that we are. Um, Um, so I think what's happened there is that Facebook has just done something really, really weird on me. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just move that. I just want to be able to see in my preview if that moves at all. Okay, I'm being told by Gordon it's okay. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. I sort of remove my preview there. That is the downside of working with a bit of a delay on your stream. Okay, anyway, so I can adjust this. It's all good. It's really nice and easy. The key thing here is you've got your t set of dots at the side. These four dots give you coarse movement. That's especially useful when using the arrows on the keyboard. And if you click them once, you get fine-tuned movement. So you can go much smaller uh, movements like so. Okay, um, I agree, Juan. Um, Facebook does not like me. Um, okay, so when I'm happy with my warping and blending, we press next. The external content info is really useful. So here we're just using a single screen, and it's telling me of the screen I'm actually using that many pixels, which is quite useful for content creators. You can create this into a template. If, it, if I had multiple screens, we'd see the overlapping areas and so on. I'm just going to press OK, save and finish. We want to save our settings. I'm just sort of jumping through a little bit because I've just seen kind of what the time is. We're, we're in a good position though, but I still want to show you this last technique. So yes, and yes, that's fine. I want to overwrite my previous settings. Important thing to remember here is that we need to export our mapping. So it's File, Export Mapping. Now this is going to either let us choose our outputs individually but actually we don't want to do individuals we want to do the compound result of the process that we've just gone through so it that would be the if one screen three screens how many screens we've done um, we want to make sure generic export format separated is selected so it's going to take that compound and split it up and number it 
for our different outputs which means that AI can just recognize them hopefully and we need to make sure our export path is right in some builds there is an error where it says something like deploy maybe um, you want the you want it to be Avalite's AI distrib system auto blend calibration so I'm just going to press export on that so that is now good I'm going to close the Viozo engine with the X yes we do want to close that now sometimes we see a thing that we are seeing exactly here where it just hasn't picked up on the warp slice or the blend slice so we've made two different slices there the warp slice controls any geometric distortion that we want to apply and the blend slice is basically a black and white gradient that adjusts the brightness of the output so we can quite easily manually push them in so over on the left here on this module that I said we'd look at afterwards we have warp output file select and we have blend output file select we've also got manual load buttons at the bottom now we can go in and load them manually but it's always worth trying to bump the neck number next to it and then go back to it there we go so that worked really nicely there uh, just bumping off and bumping back um, and so that is that result of what I just did in that auto blend um, not the most beautiful of results um, but it's perfectly fine um, and actually it's taking I've just addressed that as a 1920 output whereas that, that image I'm showing is not 1920 so if I just do that and go back to our output uh, like so it looks a lot more accurate okay so then last but not least let me show you one of my things that I am quite a fan of so we've looked at simple flat surfaces here but quite often in video mapping we get surfaces that are not simple and not flat and edge blending on those can be a pain um, so let us bring in everyone's old favorite to edge blend on let's bring in a sphere there we go I've got a sphere there I'm just going to drag the sphere on there I'm going to put its size back to normal actually I'm probably going to make it a little bit bigger let's just try that's a size of one I'm going to just go for a size of four so I'm going to put four on all three axes there maybe that is a bit big actually Yeah, let's go for two. That'll do us fine. And let's just bring that back a little bit more. There we go, like so. In fact, left is the one that we want there. Okay, there we go. Just out a little bit more. I'm just looking at my preview there. Okay, now this particular model has got a bit of a wonky UV map here. Um, let's just before we do that let's go on to um, just the interface so what I'm going to do very quickly I'm just going to address this UV map in the canvas editor so the canvas editor is the thing uh, let's change that to a more normal size resolution there we go the canvas editor is the thing that chooses how our image is applied to our 3D model in this particular case I'm just going to use the spherical application I'm going to just press it once uh, I happen to know that's on 90 degrees so if I do that again and again no. so let's do that and then let's rotate that on the Z axis minus 90 degrees I'm just being a bit fussy because I want up to be up for this demo and that is the wrong up the other up there we go that'll do me for now um, in fact what I'm going to do I bet this sphere there we go ok cool you can see that when I've saved that it's re actually replaced the model there in my list it, we've got a new one so if I go back to that one it's got the original mapping there's the one with the nice mapping ok let's jump to our output like so let's get a projector 
and let's just turn off those vertices there we go okay so let's think about the blending that we've got available if I do this kind of blending with which is on the output so it's not relative to the shape itself it's on the output of the system it looks nice here but actually when this starts to go round this sphere this physical 3d shape it's going to distort it's going to get wider it's going to be really hard to work with so let's turn that whoop, turn that blending off should have just used those handles there there we go so one of my preferred ways of approaching things like this and this is a technique that I've used on really complex weird situations um, to I've toured with spheres like this I've taught I've done work with three-dimensional faces with loads of weird stuff where we needed weird blends in weird places and they needed to observe the 3d structure in order for it to work properly so what we can do here we can actually um, use a module, a salvation module for this. Now do not be afraid, this is why I've saved this one to last. I've got about six minutes and I should be good here. So I'm going to go to my patching page here and then what I'm also going to do, I'm going to bring up my side-by-side -side view, there we go, so that you can actually see the application to the surface itself. So very quick description, the three modules that I'm selecting here these are each my projectors and I can tell that because at the top they've given they've got the names that I gave them earlier left middle and right this one on the left now is my screen fixture with the mixer underneath now we're gonna make a connection between these so to explain how edge blending works we are st although the object is 3d the gradient that we're going to apply is applied to the two-dimensional texture so those of you who have been scrubbing up on your salvation will know that this green port gives us our flat unmodified two-dimensional texture whereas this yellow one actually gives us that uh, 3d object so if we put a module in between the screen fixture and each projector independently so I'm gonna just make a bit of space there so we've got space to get it in we can actually adjust that texture before it goes out of the system um, so I am working with my left projector here so if I right click in an empty area, insert system patch and three quarters of the way down we've got some that say soft edge, soft edge dual 10, horizontal 10, horizontal 5, vertical 10, vertical 5. Um, so what that and there's free edges as well there. So each of these blending areas is going to have five adjustable bands. So if the num if there's the number five in the name, you know it's just on one edge, the edge blending. If it has two, then there are blends on the opposing side. So in the case of vertical 10, it means they're running from top to bottom, the blends, and one is on the left and one is on the right. Horizontal 10 will be one on the bottom and one on the top. And free edges has four sides, and you can change the angles of the the blends as well, so that you can again make weird things. You can you can compound these blends as well, so you can cut out some really obscure shapes. Um, but the thing vertical five for now. Um, so if we think back to that edge blending template that we had, let's just very quickly look at it. Um, in this particular case if I was using it in this situation I'd have a vertical 5 blend on the middle one a vertical 10 blend on the center one and a vertical 5 blend on the left one I'm trying to fit this in I've got like three minutes and I'm really trying to get this in before the big bad Facebook says no um, okay so we've got that module that we added we're gonna drag a connection to put this in line in between the projector we might see something change on the output so there we go double click to open up the patch we need to make sure this resolution in the patch matches the overall texture resolution that we're working with not the output resolution and then just wondering why it's clipped the left of my oh it's because I changed the resolution didn't I 2048 that's what I decided it was 2048 there we go so I saw the edge of my uh, sphere was missing then so first of all we have our blend position let's just bring this in now you can see there are five five bands on that area there 
we can change the width of that overlap area and we can even choose a percentage of that overall texture size so if I choose 10% that's going to give me I think I've just chosen now there we go that's going to give me a 204.8 pixel wide edge blend um, like I say the real benefit of this you can see it's actually following that shape round it's not just hanging on the over on the output it's actually around the shape itself and then if you need to let me just open that up a little bit you can then basically adjust the brightness going from dark to very bright of each of those bands and so usually you'd probably end up with something looking a bit like that on your control bands I'm going to just double click on stage patch at the top there just to return to that section so I could do that I could copy and paste we'd want another vertical 5 there on that projector but I can't actually show you the preview of these um, and then we'd want a vertical 10 there insert system patch vertical 10 like so so we've got three techniques we've got on output blending that's on the output page we've got the let's go back to the output page so on output blending we had our auto blend here which is the camera based warp and blend and then last but not least we had our strictly for the hardcore um, modular blending like I say once you're happy with salvation this really really is the way to go it makes your life so easy I've literally blended a three-dimensional model of a clown on stage with this stuff and I could not have done it with on output blending or possibly not even with camera blending because of the Z depth so um, I hope that was not too much information in one go for all of you um, I think that actually kind of went okay I was a little bit nervous about that one because of having to do the auto blend on the output um, hopefully that's made some sense don't forget then that coming up on Wednesday you're gonna see or hear see and hear in fact myself and Gordon we're gonna be back again uh, find out more about the training schedule see what's going on all that kind of thing um, and check out for what's coming up um, thank you very much any questions fire them in the conversation box and I will keep an eye on it for the next couple of hours and then hopefully I can answer your questions thank you very much my friends have a good evening <laughs>